go. Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome everybody. Thank you everyone who took the time to be here. People online, people live, even Ward is here, which is amazing. He came all the way from Tucson. He's so excited about this show. He's maybe even thinking to become an investor in the show. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> But, but no, just, just you know, uh, really thank you, everyone. Thank you so much to our host this time, Xiaoping, Stanley. They even prepare wonderful coffee. Thank you so much, Sonia, Edmond. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so we are here because today we are celebrating a very special event. Here with us, of course, no other than Geshe Michael Roach, Rob Haggerty, with us as well and the little history of this event is that i saw there were we were celebrating the teachers day in united states and also in mexico later i found out that it's not really a big deal here no, but yeah. we designed the whole <laughs> event uh, on that but i think it's a really great chance to to actually be grateful and have a little celebration party um just the fact that we have teachers and teachings in our lives is really really wonderful i think personally it makes life amazing and this is a good time to be together talk about it um i would like look at those poor translators struggling. oh oh yeah 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 Take thank you thank okay you translators thank you translators so much thank you Gisha michael for saving them from the hells of quick speech <laughs> So I would like to ask you, Geshela, could you share with us a little bit of what's your general view or where the world view organizations are going these days? Uh, where, what has been accomplished, let's say, in the last few years? And what's your hope for the future? Uh, it's a surprise question, kind of. And, uh, but uh, recently I had to... I don't, I don't know why, I don't remember why, but I was supposed to write down all the organization's names. And oh. there are 42 organizations in the Worldview Network. And um, I'd say, first of all, I'm really, really grateful for the harmony. There's a great deal of harmony between, especially between the directors of the different organizations. It used to be, that the director of each organization said, I'm the boss of my organization and I don't care what the other organizations are doing. And then they used to have conflicts, not personal conflicts, but schedule conflicts and, and you know, equipment conflicts and funding conflicts. And, and nowadays uh, it's completely changed. And all the directors of the different organizations are working together and talking to each other and attending each other's programs. And I'm extremely happy. Uh, everything is, I don't know, it's bad luck to say. Uh, <laughs> everything is going very smoothly. Uh, people are really helping each other. And I believe, uh, I like to exaggerate, but I believe without exaggeration, kind of, uh, there's about 200,000 students uh, benefiting from the different organizations. So I'm I'm personally really happy. And, and because I'm getting older, I, I, I'm very glad that uh, the organizations are strong and I think they're gonna keep going into the future. And that, that makes me happy also. That's all. That's wonderful, okay. that's wonderful. Uh, it's good to know that things are going well. It's good to know. I have seen it too. Uh, it Here now that I've been in Sedona lately for the last few years, I do see there is an atmosphere of friendship and collaboration and it's getting more and more and I actually enjoy it very much. What do you have to say, Rob? How do you see the world these days here in, in uh, the capital of the world, Greenbrook, Arizona? Well, there's coffee, first of all. There's the best <laughs> coffee at the Peachtree Cafe yeah. Thursday House. through Monday. Uh, yeah, it's just been amazing. I think everyone uh, having been around for so long and seeing students sort of like as we sort of uh, come and go and uh, it, there really is like this real sense of sort of uh, family, mm -hmm. I think, and you can feel it when we 
travel. It's funny because I'm looking online, looking at all the people online. And, uh, you know, during the pandemic, like everyone else, I was one of the, this was my platform. This is where, this was my family, was the online platform. And so without, I think, the people online, uh, there wouldn't be what's going on right now, really. So it's really beautiful. I see, I see Hector. Yeah, I see Paulina. Yeah. I see Paulina. Yeah. Hector, by the way, is using my email. I don't know why, but <laughs> hello, Hector. <laughs> Probably I sent him the link. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, as Rob say, it's really wonderful. Um, he even let me crash his couch every Friday to set up for mixed nuts. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The coffee is open. The yeah. coffee shop is open almost what five days a week yeah that's wonderful and maybe soon more uh, so we'll that. see <laughs> but it's going very well so in these lines we want to have a little celebration party which is this program and the idea is like we will be sharing some wisdom we will be advertising for new events we will be rejoicing about goals and accomplishments so let's begin <laughs> for that I would like to first just get you with some fresh, fresh baked news. <laughs> and we're going to go this to that. I go. Yeah, this is where you can go. I'm just going to present. Gina is going to help me to share some events that are happening all, all over the world. You're welcome to stay if you want. Sure. And we will watch this real quick. Okay, let's start with this section and then we start having guests in the program. Okay, so first of all, as you may know, every Saturday, every Monday, we get together at the Shuangsang Tower, the West Shuangsang Tower, which happens to be the College of International Management in Sedona. We have translation classes, amazing. Two on Monday, one on Saturday. Everyone is welcome to come. You can follow the QR code. The classes are amazing, are getting more and more interesting. And the purpose of this of course, in one hand, to help preserving the ancient wisdom. In the other hand, also train new translators. And I will say also to share the content of these wonderful books with general audience. That's me. So. Not me? Yeah. Well, yeah, you too, of course. You're <laughs> great at Tibet. And I think you read very well. I, I was surprised. Really? Yeah. Why? I should. I, I don't know. I don't know. You, After you, 28 years, you would think something would sort no, of go you, in. Of course. Yeah, you're right. You live for a few years. You come back reloaded. It's wonderful. So in order to support this project, there is a very uh, how's it, special plan. It's called the Book Night Club. <laughs> no, no, no. Good Night Book Club. Okay. Book Night. Night. Good Night Book Club. Nightclub. Nightclub. As, as one likes to call it. And they are finally released the Belize. Yes. The, the previous one, please. Yes. The Belize, which you may have here, is a great technology where you sleep well at night because you hide your computer in this wonderful Belize. You don't have electronics with you. You even put a lock with a timer. So you cannot fall into the temptations of late night. There is your lock. Yeah. Yeah. It even comes with a charger. Amazing. And the most amazing thing is a tote bag, Ooh. I think. And you're going to get it all if you sign up for only $30 a month. $100 a month? I thought it was 30 Oh, OK. I don't know. But you're going to know where you can get part. that. Yeah. But also, you're going to get some books to read. One of them is the book um, Word Just Finished. We're going to have him soon talking about it. And if you want to sign up, we're going to use the next QR code for you. The next picture, please. Yes, there you can sign up for the night. Good night, book club. <laughs> now I can see there. Night, book, good. Yeah. <laughs> so Any variation one that you want to say. Yeah. As long as you get the $30. Yes. That's the important thing. So please sign up. Have you please tried? I have tried it. They forced me. I liked it. You did? Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel? How does your mind feel after? It's great. Yeah. It's great. It's really great. I even have read the book some nights uh, and it has been just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I really recommend it. And you are helping so many people, so many projects because from the content of these books, many other uh, projects happen. So let's go to the next thing, please. 
Okay, very soon. Oh, wait, is that you? No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was Nicola show when he was younger. Um, it so it's like Hector. Maybe. Yeah. I never met him when he was younger. I always met him he after had, he had very long, luxurious hair. Okay. We he will be here with us soon, so we can ask him about it. But the thing is, uh, you know, Nick Lachaud is one of the directors or the director of the Diamond Color Classics, the executive director. But also he's gonna be leading us with a very interesting discussion tomorrow. If you are interested about some special pre-recorded classes that Tim Lachaud helped recording with Geshe Michael. Geshe Michael is not teaching live tomorrow. It's a pre-recording, but he will be teaching live about this in Mexico in July. So these series are meant for people to catch up with the classes. I think they're going to be amazing. You can sign up. Tomorrow is the first one. Next one, June 11th. Third one, July the 6th. So these are like a pre-released? Is this like a special release? It's a special never release. Before? Never been released before. Oh my God. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I didn't know about that. Now I know I'm going to try to watch. <laughs> 6 a.m. Arizona time. Okay, next one, please. And that's what I mean. Later, later, Geshe Michael actually is going to be in Mexico. And we're going to have a special team of people speaking about it too, to get you excited, to invite you to the event. Next one. Yeah, just quickly, in June, YSI has a bunch of events. They have the Lady Niguma Heart of Gold certification from June 1st to uh, the 4th. Then they have a teacher training from the 4th to the 8th is the next picture. And then... Then they are going to Japan and have a special retreat over there, led by Earl and Benji. So if you are following YSI, there is a bunch of things happening in June. Then remember, in November, is next picture, they're going to have a very, very cool final chapter on the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, led by Geshe Michael in the Sedona College of International Management. I love this one in person. Yeah, me too. It's wonderful times. People come to visit from all over the world, and it's just great. See, yeah, all the New York students come. It's, yeah, you know, all the people from Europe and Asia. It's great. Yeah, send your students, Hector. Well, you can come too if you want. <laughs> uh, and then next, please. Yes. Also, June fourth to the eighth, Team Lowenhop is going to be leading a course in Kyoto. Kyoto is having a party in June, I think. Because just after that, um, great teacher, John Brady, he's going to be teaching about the Heart Sutra in Japan. That's June 8th to June 10th. Um, you can attend if you're in Japan. Just talk to Sophie Sao. And after that, yeah, we talk about it. The, the YSI event is happening also. Will Peace Tree World News be there to cover it? What's going on? We are planning. We are in details. Maybe, maybe so, maybe so. It depends if we get the right sponsors. It may happen. Send in your budget. Yeah. Send send in the chat if you want Petri World News to go or to stay in Rimrock, Arizona alone, lonely. <laughs> I don't know if people have registered for the course already. Too. All right. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay, next picture, please. Uh, yeah, Hector and his wonderful team, Rachel Webb and other people are organizing a retreat in Costa Rica. That's in the same day, it's June 8th to June 15th. So if you cannot make it to Japan, maybe you can go to Costa Rica. But Japan is wonderful. I don't know about Costa Rica, I've never been there. Japan, I've been there, is wonderful. Maybe Peachtree World News needs to go to Costa Rica. Maybe, <laughs> if there was just like a person with long beard, who may want to sponsor. <laughs> well, kidding, but, but there you go. You can go follow the QR code. I hear your retreats, Hector, are wonderful. Hope it's true. And let's go to the next event. Yeah, in Spain, October. Have you been in Spain ever? Uh, I've not been to Spain. Neither do I. Maybe we could do something about it. We'll <laughs> have to figure it out later. But from October 31st to the 10th of November, there's going to be a cool event in Barcelona. Some friends have gone to Barcelona. They say it's wonderful. I would love to go to Barcelona. Yeah, that'll be yeah. very, very cool. So they are organizing this event also on the Heart Sutra Retreat. You can also follow the QR code for more information. And next one, please. 
Uh, October, we have Diamond Mountain. Geshe Malhu is going to be there teaching Ariana Garjuna health practices. Wonderful place to be. We were just there recently. I had a very, very beautiful time there. Right. So if you haven't been in Diamond Mountain lately, it's a great chance to go. Very, very beautiful. You're going to be surprised, especially if you haven't been there in a while. Yeah, it sells out fast. Make sure you guys register early. Yeah, this Did time you register? No, not yet. I had to camp last time. It was tough, but beautiful also. Yeah. It was great. And just before that, they are doing this reforestation program, which is the Sky Harvest. It's looking really, really good. So if you're interested on that and helping to plant some trees, bring some water, bring life to the atmosphere there, how do you say to the environment there? This is a good project for you. Next one, please. We're getting almost there. Okay, so these days in the Sedona College, we're having this course, Impossible Anger. Well, they are having this course, Impossible Anger. And at the end of the course, there's going to be a special Q&A. You can sign up for it. It's free. It's fun. It's exciting. It's organized by Seji Arao mostly and other um, ACIM students. Also, Nur's here yet. Uh, I think so, but... The reason I mention it is because, next one, please. She's organizing also uh, this very wonderful um, foundation project run by Geshe Michael and Veronica Roach. They found race for many, many projects, many organizations. She's going to be here with us, and we hope we can, she can talk more about it very soon. But some of you may already be familiar with this. They found race a lot of resources. If I'll say everything goes well. And then they are used for the benefit of many, many wonderful projects. Yeah, that's great. There's so many good things here. Uh, lots of opportunities to help, study, and camp. Yes. And next one, please. Finally, we're going to be closing this year with wonderful teachings again in Japan uh, with Geshe Michael in Kyoto, leading steps on the path December 1st to the 7th to december 7th so i think it's a wonderful time to celebrate and finish the year in a worldwide trip to kyoto if you can come it will be wonderful yeah it's a great photograph one yeah who may have taken it it's great i thought it was shopping and stuff only one side they were they, they were i was on the side taking a little selfie photo no it's really a wonderful picture how much was it for um for the um, Steps on the Path organization to get the picture, how much they gave you? I can't, we can't discuss that here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you. So I think that's it, unless I'm missing anything. Is there, any, yeah, that was it with the news. So now you have a general sense of what's coming in the next few months. If you're interested, you can find more information in the correspondent websites. And uh, let's start with our guest sections. For the first person, we have a very good friend who came all the way from Tucson. He crossed the desert, the Gobi <laughs> Desert, to be here. And he has very interesting things to share with us today. Yes, please. Hey, don't steal my... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Who's mine? Oh. No, I'm joking. <laughs> maybe maybe Rob needs I don't know mm -hmm. uh, can, can we I guess yeah, no. okay. he's interested in your water <laughs> just water <laughs> how was your trip word my trip was excellent yeah yeah nice it's good to see you thank you so much yeah. we had class last night and it was a lot of fun yeah. that's wonderful so so lately, Ward, you have been doing a lot. I don't know what happened, babies, <laughs> projects, books, but I guess it's a good sign. You look happy. Thank you. And that's very good. You look wealthy. And that's <laughs> good too. You. you look younger. <laughs> and that's very good. Okay. Thank you. So tell us a little bit what you've been doing lately. And maybe you have something in mind that you would like to share with us today. Okay. A special thing you didn't talk about before. Okay. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, and thank you, Rob. Um, yeah, it's it's an honor to be here today, um, celebrating teachers. Um I don't it's pretty it's a pretty interesting concept or thinking about teachers in general, how how they affect your life 
I think for me in our country, um, in the US, we don't really respect teachers to the level that we could and their value and how much they could actually, how much they do and how much they could um, affect our lives in a positive way. Yeah, I figured. I even congratulate people that day and everyone was like, what? We don't really do much. Like how many pictures they and coffee shops and stuff. And people were like, no. Exactly. Yeah. No, no one really considers it too much. But if I, if I reflect on my life, and think of especially like my parents, being a parent myself now um, as teachers, you know, my whole life has been affected or supported by teachers. And so it's it's a, a, a new way to look at life. And now I'm becoming more of a teacher myself. And it's really hard work. <laughs> I, I love my students. They, they, it's not all about coffee and donuts and no, glory. No, only one hundred dollar bills that you're saving. Yeah. No, children. Uh, no, so no, it's really hard work. It's 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 probably the most rewarding work as well, but it's difficult. Um, it's it, it is like raising kids. You have to you have to be very patient. You have to um nurture uh, a lot, and it, you know it's it pretty much all comes down to love. I know we joke about hundred dollar bills and stuff but it doesn't matter <laughs> there's no amount of money that can make you be happy you know with your students it's just you none none <laughs> you, it, you have to it's all love you have to do it for love and and um and then so as i'm being a parent and being a teacher i'm reflecting i'm like wait a second people did this to me <laughs> and i'm like and i was i was I was trouble, you know, I was always trouble. To my teachers, I was horrible trouble. To my, to, to my current teachers as well. To my <laughs> to my parents, I was horrible trouble, you know? And- um, You're gonna pay, don't worry. Yeah, I'm paying, I'm paying. I just, Juan, Juan's one of my students, uh, I'm paying. Uh, don't worry. Double. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, it, but it's the most rewarding thing. And to to have that turnaround and to be able to now give back is is amazing so i'm i'm very grateful very excited that's wonderful word thank you so much for sharing <laughs> okay so now next question i would like to know a little bit of um maybe a project that you are getting involved lately that you would like to invite people to participate or something you're planning for the future sir yeah thanks Juan. um i do have a new project coming up it's it's kind of a variation on old projects so so about eight years ago, my teacher asked me to do a translation program. And at that time, I was just a beginning translator. And I didn't feel I didn't feel very confident in that at the time. And uh, so I continued just to do my work. Um, we were translating a book um, called The Difficult Points on the Mind Only School. And we worked on that for... Um, Keep, keep about six about or seven it. years and it was it was it was extremely difficult and so um through that process of doing this this hard book um i don't know i t uh i told my partner one day i was just i was working on a um a, a, a document uh translating and basically i've been working on this document for many years and i didn't know what the document said you know i didn't I just worked on it because my teacher asked me to. And then one day I could read it. I was like, I was like, wait, I can read this now. And the next week I, I started translating on my own because I was like, oh, I can translate now? I'm translating. <laughs> and so I went nuts. I start, I translated the book I was working on. I translated another book that's short, but um, very exciting, a, a, a classic called The 30 Verses. And it's, it's all wrong. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but um i'm still inspired and the passion so then i was like okay now i can teach and so um i had one student who asked me can you teach us grammar and i hated grammar growing up i mean hated it i remember um how rude i was to my grammar teacher you know <laughs> and and uh this is this is the book i uh, we recently finished it's an amazing book and um i recommend it if you sign up for the Good Night Book Club, you'll receive this book amongst other um, uh, gifts, books. like a valise to yeah. carry your 
put your computer in um at night and other electronics uh so so um so anyway um so i got really excited and my student who asked to uh learn grammar i was like okay um i was like let's let's translate a, a grammar text together and so we did and um it's a it's a classic um grammar text which uh it was it was difficult but now we're teaching it together and um they they're doing quite well there's an overseas program um both those students who helped with the text went on that program now they're teaching um so it's like a it's like a virus or something like the the it's like a it's like a bug and i feel like i have the bug like i'm just like i want to teach i want to teach more who are you teach who wants to learn something you know it's amazing to hear your students uh during class uh just their their spoken of the translation just um, each time more and more better and better and yeah. so it's, it's incredible to watch yeah yeah it's an incredible process um my teacher asked me what are you doing <laughs> how are you how are you doing this and we work really hard we work hard i'm i'm a little you know a bit of a uh whip cracker um but i don't know they're happy i don't know why uh they're very they happy. like pain <laughs> i guess so <laughs> they're very happy in class I don't know. They seem very grateful. I I don't know. I guess I guess I was grateful for my teachers as well, but because um, <laughs> it's not what I'm doing. <laughs> it's creating. But no, it's it's very exciting. And so so what I'm doing now is I want to go deeper with the material. And so we're doing a, a like a summer intensive program. I'm still hammering out the details. So um, we we it's not completely formed. But basically, um, on the weekends, basically all, all day. We uh, we're studying the ancient language. Um, we're studying ancient texts. Um, we're going to study the spoken language some to get people's mouths uh, like used to speaking. Um, and just um, and we're just sharing. And it's 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 forming a community. Um, we have on the weekends we have this fun together. People come in and out of class, and we're translating um, about thirty books right now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so how people how people cool get to know more about this is it like do you have like a fan fan <laughs> club uh <laughs> telegram group or do you want to... no fan club yet you can start I mean, it if you maybe, want maybe. I, I, I don't mind a fan club or how people can connect with any of these uh wonderful activities projects if they want a book what do you just give it to the game or <laughs> kind of i gave you one <laughs> yeah uh no um we have a we have a website um diamond cutter classics um, on there, there's a link um, for the translation program, but for the new program, I'm still just um, hammering out the details. Within the week, I should have it all hammered out, and I'll have a QR code. You can put it on Peachtree World News, Wonderful. and um, we'll, we'll get, it all. We'll get yeah. it all set up. Okay, so we'll keep reporting on this progress, yeah. and thank you so much, Ward, for having come. Okay. We wish you could come more okay. and more. Okay. We'll Thank see you. if that's possible in the future. Okay. If the budget allows. Okay. 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 All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Mom. Thank you. Or Thank, Thank you so you. much for sharing yeah, and for perfect. teaching. Thank you. Mom. And for keep studying and everything. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right, Juan, who is next? We have now a very good friend from New York City. And for that, we want to also invite our friend, Chloe. Chloe, for those who don't like the Spanish presentation, she's gonna help us and to lead a talk and an interview with our friend, Hector Marcel, that should be somewhere there. He's gonna be sharing with us what's new in New York, other than your wonderful new haircut. <laughs> Hector, how are you? I'm really good. Thanks. How are you all? It's so lovely to see all of you. Hi. Hi, Rob. Hi, Chloe. Something. Your new haircut. Really? It's like, wow. Who's that? I know. It looks good. I'm working it. <laughs> you can thank the Med Gala for that. Yeah. That's wonderful. How was it, by the way? You both had the chance to go? Yeah, the Med Gala was great. Um, so I was, when I saw Hector, I'm like, what what happened to your hair? <laughs> There's hair, but uh, other than that, that was a great successful event. I got the karma for hair. Yeah, suddenly. <laughs> That's wonderful. Suddenly. 
<laughs> and tell us, Hector, you're getting ready for a retreat in Costa Rica. What else are you doing? What? What? Okay. Well, let's start from the beginning. I, hear I was you born were... when I was very young. I wow. bet. <laughs> so what happened after that? <laughs> and then I grew up. <laughs> I met a teacher. That's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I hear I hear from Rob that you you both used to be young and and study together and had long and hair. Had a lot of fun. We both had long hair. Glad to hear. Yeah, yeah. This is. I'm glad to hear that you have been good friends since long time, and maybe you, as far as I understand, you were preparing something interesting to share with us today. No, 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 I left that. I left that alone. So I just wanted the retreat to share, but I'm happy to to share all the wonderful things that we're doing in New York, um, Med Gala included, right? With uh, Chloe came over to the Med Gala, which is it's our annual fundraiser, but also it's a way to gather everyone that's in the wellness industry, everyone that wants to teach people about mental wellness, sort of preventative mental health, right? Like get your mind good before it goes bad. <laughs> like work on your mind now because bad things can happen. And when bad things happen, if your mind is good, you can have an extraordinary experience of that thing and actually learn something and help other people, right? So the Med Gala is our annual opportunity to bring all the yoga studios, all the meditation studios, all the people that are teaching anything about wellness and just come together because the students will go to this studio or that studio, that studio in New York, and it's better if all the brands work together. So it's our dream as a nonprofit to make sure we infect the wellness industry with view, with the right way to look at the world. So it's a little secret project to say, well, we're the nonprofit in New York. So let us bring you all together and let's help everybody get their mind straight. So that's one of the really big goals and the wins of Med Gala. And this year was magic. It was really quite beautiful because we not only had the wellness studios come with their students, we had brands like big organizations that wanted to support us. Like we've, we've had Nike, we've had Smartwater, we had all these big brands. So we believe in what you're doing to people's minds. And so we would like to support you. So that's, that's sort of the culmination of what our New York Center has been doing. Everything else sort of is some iteration of that, and none of that could ever have happened without having found a teacher that put that view in my mind in the first place, you see, and sparked some meaning. So our job in New York is can we get that fire that this – you know, that it was Geshe and Michael who sort of turned on this mind of mine and Rob at, at the original Three Jewels, you know, and and really did something that is 28 years on, still alive and overflowing, like it's growing, right? So we're building an army of teachers that have the right view, thanks to having met one teacher, you know, and hopefully we're infecting all the other studios to get that view, if they hope to actually help people in their wellness practices, you know. So Hector, what was the your relationship of the idea of teacher? So was it a natural thing for you? <laughs> so <laughs> tell us about what's your relationship with teacher, the teacher, yeah. and how did you come to be a student of Kasha Michael? Geshe Michael knows I was a terrible student. <laughs> I was a fighting, argumentative, rebellious student, at least in my mind. You know, I was like nice in the face, but inside it, I was trouble. You know, uh, I was rejecting the idea, like many people do in the West. Uh, we reject the idea of someone telling me what to do, <laughs> which is what I thought the teacher meant when I was younger, you know, and it's funny because we have these two things in the West, don't tell me what to do. And then at the same time, we're like, please, someone help me, tell me what to do. <laughs> and so that tension, that tension plays out in every student, at least in New York, it's still alive and well in New York, Rob, Rob that, that tension between 
uh, I don't want a teacher and I definitely need a teacher. And at some point, the thing that wins, hopefully, is the wisdom that understands someone has already gone through this thing and that someone can actually help you. And if you open up to that, the world opens up. And so that humbling experience happened to me many times in front of Geshe Michael, <laughs> continues to happen, you know. Um, but I think, uh, I don't know, the seeds in my mind uh, were not activated by any other teacher. I had plenty of people that said, why don't you do this and why don't you do that? But for some magic, magic reason, it was him, you know, that, uh, the him that I wanted to fight. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. And then everything he said was extraordinary, like beyond normal, really extraordinary. And I couldn't remove it from my mind after he would drop a bomb of wisdom in my mind that would slowly destroy my misconceptions about me and the world. You know, it would debate my anger it would debate <laughs> my stubbornness slowly he would just say one word and it would grow in my mind for months and months and months and after a while i i lost the fight thank goodness i lost the fight and at that point i think i actually became his willing student you know before that i was like uh, magnetized to something that just bubbled up and removed all the negativity. <laughs> it was like a big purification. Um, and so I, th I think that happens for a couple of reasons. I definitely had some seeds that with that one person, I could listen and I, I would be willing to show up the next time and the next time. And it's, you know, his wisdom, his vast knowledge, his love, his compassion, that I kept seeing him in a particular way. But also, he was a kind of representation of my mom and my dad because they had, they had shown me that you could trust a parent and you could, someone could help you. And so in some way, there's an archetype of teacher that we all have, yeah, that the one person can ignite it and then suddenly you start seeing everyone as a teacher, as a teacher, as a teacher. So I was a rebellious student. And it took a powerful person <laughs> to wake up <laughs> the student in me. And thank goodness. And I hope, I hope that for everyone. And that's one of the reasons at Three Jewels, we're now building an army of teachers. Because everyone needs to meet someone like that. Because if you do, you can find the thing you're always looking for. You know. So that's, that's my relationship with teachers. Thank you so much, Hector. You definitely did that to me. You never told me what to do, and now I'm here. <laughs> but that's the way to a skillful teacher to <laughs> give students space and keep them growing until they're ripened. They will be in the right place. So thank you, Hector. Thank you so much, Hector. A quick question. Are you opening more tree jewels, like branches, offices, and stuff? It's so funny. Like that question has been coming up over and over. We've had invitation to open in LA. We've been shown centers. Why don't you operate here in Paris, in London, in uh, in Germany? Um, but we've been resisting it because until I have a team at Three Jewels that can repeat the success we have here, people that can manage, everybody can manage a shop, no problem. You can sell things and you can have a shop. But to have the wisdom that takes care of the students and the community. That's the real Three Jewels, right? Um, we just had a little trip down memory lane. We went to the original Three Jewels. I don't know if you saw, Rob. We went to the I original. Did. It was so nice to see you guys on the on the uh, stoop there. Exactly, right? And yeah. then that, that did something to me. I'm like, this is, I thought what we had at Three Jewels is precious. But after doing that trip of going where Geshe Michael and Annie Palmer began Three Jewels and then went to the Quaker house and then went to 61 Fourth Avenue. Until then, I'm like, oh, my responsibility is way bigger than even I thought, you know, to make sure we take care. So yes, we will open up new Three Jewels, but with a powerful team that will guarantee success in whichever state, country we end up doing it. Yeah. Wonderful, Hector. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Hector. you so much. Thank you. It's Wonderful. my pleasure. Happy Teacher's Day, everyone. May all of you be 
be connecting to that as often as you can. Yeah. Try to come in November to Hatha Yoga. Bring your students. I, I can send students, but I'm teaching our teacher training. Every year we have like over 100 people learning to become meditation teachers. So that's, I'm booked out that oh, October, okay. November, December. Yeah, yeah. Or come yeah. whenever you can. To <laughs> I'll send people. Blessings, yeah. everyone. Bye. Right. Thank, Thank you, Ecuador. Okay. Thank you so much, Chloe. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, we're going to introduce now the host, the big host of this house, of this Potala, oops, of this great place. Uh, so <laughs> we would like to welcome Xiaoping and Stanley. Thank you so much for hosting us. Thank you so much for all the support. They even came with a big coffee machine to have coffee for every one of us. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Really appreciate it. We always tell Juan when he became a, when he becomes a million uh, millionaire in the future. Don't forget who is your friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, when you finally become who's success, <laughs> remember us. And I was like, I thought I was already success, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> No, of course. Thank you so much. Really, really thank you for all the support, all the friendship also. Um, we would like to ask you first, uh, if you could share with us a little bit of what has been for your personal experience to be able, because in my eyes, you are one of a uh, big example on how to be close to a teacher, how to learn from the teacher, how to serve and help the projects of your teacher. And it's a really beautiful, wonderful example. And you are managing not only one project, I may have one, but you have like five or six each at least. So how do you manage to do all these? What's your maybe even advice on um, how you feel about it? Oh, I thought we are talking about teachers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. He always threw out like surprising questions. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But in regards of teachers, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, first is like, how do you feel about it? But of oh. course, share, share what is in your heart. Mm -hmm. I think you talk about different projects that each of us are doing or both of us are working on, but I could, I could, I think I could on behalf of both of us, I think it has everything to do with teachers mm -hmm. because for example, everything I do, all those projects, uh, all of them, the reason I, I decided to do it at the first place, the reason I'm still doing, the reason I'm devoted to do them, yeah. uh, the most, the, do a great job as much as as best as I can. It's because it's it's I want to fulfill my teacher's wishes, and it's because it's also uh, as a student. I think is the uh, humble gift I could offer to my teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have a nickname when I was in high school. People call me the the prince of blue or something. <laughs> blue blue like feeling blue all the time oh okay like Interesting. a not a happy person. not very excited no, no. Oh. and then uh, my teacher said um, if you want to be a happier person don't think about too much about yourself mm. and help more people i and hear then, that uh, yeah a lot right <laughs> yeah, i hear that one and then he said if you feel constantly stressed out the best way to calm yourself down is to do more projects <laughs> <laughs> i think that's why we are doing so many projects <laughs> yeah yeah that's wonderful yeah so what what have you been thinking about um maybe something you have been lately either learning either studying or or yeah. teaching yourselves that maybe yeah. you think could be helpful for yeah to share cool. okay so, yeah. um mm -hmm. I want to share um, about teachers' day is that they are usually in a class with their are 10 good qualities about a great teacher that we are, we should looking for in a teacher and follow them. So the last two are love, compassion, and uh, patience. A teacher have patience, they 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 teach or they help the students tirelessly. They so, repeat the same story 10,000 times. Yeah. <laughs> and then I recall that when I think of these topics this morning, then uh, I one memory came back. I remember one sketch I was sharing with me, I think in Peru. 
And then he was sharing with me the story of his teacher, Karim Poche, how he, he spent over 20, 30 years to help one student to build their character, to train them, to have love and compassion and wisdom. And in my heart, I was saying, Gesha, to me, you are the same. You are helping your student, you're helping me. You spend years and years to train us. So personally, I have been learning with you for over like 13, 14 years. Yeah, and I sometimes I'll hear you say, oh, this student, he was not like that 20 or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now he, he became a much better person or he became softer, he became kinder. So for me, I think he's a great example of teaching me mm -hmm. as a good teacher, we should have love and patience. Thanks for the love and the patience. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, so uh, when you ask us to share something to celebrate our teachers or teachings or something that we have learned recently, I was thinking about uh, teachings that Geshe-la has done recently in Diamond Mountain about the uh, A versus Lojong. A versus. Yeah, by uh, Diamond Lion, Lamitamba. Uh, so I, the first one is especially powerful to me. The first one is basically treating, the, the, the verse says treating all living beings more precious that, than a wish giving gem, right? Mm -hmm. And the way I like to practice it and the way how geshe uh, interpreted it is living being doesn't mean like all the people in the world. You can't reach out to all the people. Living being just means where, wherever you go, whoever you meet, and those are your living beings. Mm -hmm. uh, and I find it a very nice um, life and business strat strategy too, because uh, whatever you do, you meet people uh, in different places at different times. And, and if you learn that versus, you can always treat them nicely, try to help them wherever you go. Uh, even in Rimrock, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you always meet people anywhere, mm -hmm. and I find it very, very uh, dear that if I can learn to treat people nicely, try to think of think about myself less. Like I meet people, and I find out that I why people like to talk about things about themselves <laughs> when I meet people. <laughs> like every three minutes, they turn the topic to themselves and I realize I'm doing that all the time uh, I, I'm always thinking about myself but the way to happiness and success is to stop that and treat other people and treasure other people and I I don't know if Xiaoping agrees but if the more we do that the much happier and successful we are and so I to me it feels like a great great gift that that our teacher has granted us and uh, in Chinese, by the way, uh, there are different, many different words for teacher. Uh -huh. The one that I like, it's called shifu. 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 That's a famous word. Yes, yes. But, but it's not the one you you saw in the martial art. Oh, uh, it's not. Yeah. Oh. Shifu means, <laughs> si, oh, yeah, in okay. Cantonese, shifu. Okay. But shi means teacher. Yeah. Fu means father. Shifu. Fu means father. Fu. Father, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... The, the Chinese traditional cultural things that uh, if somebody has been your teacher just for one day, you should treat them as your father or mother mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Yeah, wow. so it's a cool word. Wow. Yeah, so we, we, we respect our teachers, but in my heart, we respect them also with love because we see them as our father or mother yeah. also at the same time. They say That's Vietnamese awesome. is similar. Su, su fu. Su. <laughs> yeah. similar yeah 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 that's wonderful and i think that's a very beautiful asian tradition it's yeah. more ingrained in the culture like this admiration and respect for teachers mm -hmm. and i think it's really wonderful when we have that in life because mm -hmm. may maybe you may agree um it's similar to what hector was saying like we really have this deep feeling of I wish there was someone who could guide me through life to mm -hmm. to yeah. get to a better place, almost like fitting with this definition of uh, being a good leader. We are looking for leaders, which are our teachers that can guide us, but that also they have 
love for us. Mm -hmm. They have this patience that you were talking about. So I think it's a maybe it's actually one of the reasons why many Asian cultures are so successful mm -hmm. as societies. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just admirable. Thank you. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. By the way, yeah. you asked us to talk about something to celebrate. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. Okay. That's a great present for teachers. They yeah. like that when we do good things. That's yeah. what they say. Well, maybe we can wrap up, up, yeah, up yeah, by uh, celebrating something we have done as a gift to mm -hmm. our teachers and teachers. Yeah. You want to start? Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we should. Yeah. Wrap up. Uh, yeah. 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 So um, we are doing many things to uh, each of us and together. And so for me, I think to celebrate the Teacher's Day uh, is, as we you may know, we are I'm working on a project to build a university and Diamond Silk Entrepreneur University. There's a saying in Chinese called 十年树木, 百年树人, mm. meaning it takes 10 years to grow a tree. Yeah. And it like takes outside. like <laughs> outside we planted two pitches, yeah. trees. And then it takes 100 years to to cultivate a talent, to cultivate a talent. So I think when when, when me, when our team, we are work when we are working on building this university, I think in our hearts, uh I want to pass down the 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 idea that Gesha and my teacher taught me and like to so that as a school we are attracting, we want to cultivate and attract great teachers, those kind one wise one and patient one. And because we want to uh train, grow more talents, grow more students for the world. And um in my heart, I'm willing to learn from my teacher to have patience. So I want our the teachers in our school uh, have patience and love and wisdom because in this way, we are going to grow many students for many generations. And I think uh, as long as this university survive one day in the world and it is keep offering a gift to our teachers. And I, I would like to use this chance to invite two of our great teachers from our university, Evan and Sonia, <laughs> to say hi. <laughs> they are coming from, oh. from uh, Evan, is uh, currently our uh, uh, mission officer for our program. And Sonia is uh, our development officer for our university. Okay. And uh, so they just came two days ago, arrived in Irma, Sedona, two days ago from China and Japan. So I'd like to welcome them and thank them. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about this center of the universe here? <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, right. <laughs> yeah, we're coming here because we're going to have a event in uh, Sedona. So uh, watch out for future world news for <laughs> our updates. Yeah, it's a great place here. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> nice to see you. You are here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for helping us with the production. Yeah. yeah. And the coffee. Yeah, and the coffee. Really? No, I think it's it's wonderful because. I didn't know what I was gonna do, <laughs> like like the other members of the team couldn't make it this time, mm -hmm. and then I was like, "What are we gonna do?" But then I show up, and everything is set up, everything is taken care of. They even are making coffee. Thank you so much. <laughs> you saved the day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think, oh, yeah. yeah, you're helping us to provide a wonderful space for spending time together. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Do you want to share anything else? Well, uh, quickly. So. Yes. I really am grateful to for my teacher for uh, teaching me the art of uh, cultural mining or diamond mining. Mm. So uh, seven years ago, Geshela uh, asked me to do two things mainly. Number one, asked me and Xiaoping to start a CSP project, okay. Classic Soft Power. That's the project where we mo mainly teach the business people to do mining from the ancient classics and turn them into uh, modern life tools. And at the same year, uh, we started the Xuanzang Power Program together. 
So uh, I feel like I'm doing two very extreme things together. One extreme is going back to the original words of the, the, the classics where, you know, you feel confused and don't know what to do all the time. Like I was given the text Abhidhamma Kosha. I was thinking about like Arjuna <laughs> and then Geshe, I said, no, Abhidhamma works for you. Uh, so it took me some years to understand. <laughs> I still I'm trying to guess why I was given that book. And then at the same time, we, we are going, we were teaching the uh, executives to use these classics for their work, for their life. So working on both ends, like the front end and back end together really gave me tremendous, uh, I don't know, uh, like it opens my eyes for that's many wonderful. many things i haven't seen before yeah that's yeah. wonderful that's wonderful thank you for sharing and and i'm also very admire how elegant is your english like very beautiful i should learn more about that too so thank you thank you so much for yeah. everything you both are doing i think it's really really admirable yeah. and i think you are helping many many people and of course our dear teacher as well so thank you so much yeah. okay thank you Thank you. Okay, for our next segment, I would like to invite a very good friend of mine to, to do it with me because we are, yeah, we are logging to another side of the world. We are going to Latin America to have a quick talk with our dear friends, Aldo and Paulina. Paulina is these days living in Argentina, but she is finally realizing that actually Sedona is a better place. <laughs> <laughs> and Aldo is also holding, how say, standing strong in Guadalajara, helping <laughs> many, many people. Hola, Aldo. Hola, Pau. ¿Cómo están? Good to see you. Thank Hi, Juan. Good to see you. Thank you Hello, for Juan, having us here. here with me. Hi, Hi Rob. Uh, Hi, Tim. And Rob Haggerty. <laughs> <laughs> So how are you? Tell us. Who who wants to start? Pau, how's the weather in Argentina? Is winter time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very cool. It's actually crazy, no? They are supposedly under the Ecuador line, equator line. So it's winter time. Can you believe? And they say the water flushes in the opposite direction. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that one. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Pau. So, thank you. <laughs> yes. So tell us a little bit of uh, what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with a little grateful thank you thing for our teachers? Yes, Juan. Thank you. Um, as I was thinking, well, as you all know, uh, everything we we've learned, we owe it to our holy teachers starting with our dad and mom. So when I think about my teachers, I just want to like bow at them and be very grateful. And I feel like this impulse to offer them something. And uh, as we all know, like they say the, the biggest offering we can give them is our practice. It's the, our intention and our hard work to become a more kind, loveful, thoughtful person. And I just want to inspire everyone here because I know everyone in the call is doing it. So I just want to inspire everyone here to rejoice that we are doing that offering to our holy teachers because we're really trying. And like, I see you actually, this program is like one of your uh, ways to serve your teacher, Juan, and I see team that's constantly serving Geshela like with thousand arms, and then there's Rob that's constantly serving his teacher, and everyone here in this call, the translators, the tech team, and everyone. So I just want like this moment to celebrate and really rejoice of our hard work and service and our highest offering our teachers and I think that's very beautiful and it's a good moment to feel like inspired and really 
just rejoice and be happy about it. <laughs> and thank so you, Aldo. It, thank you. <laughs> wow. and, and it came to my mind that we often think that the best offerings for our spiritual teachers are our good deeds and anything that makes them happy, which is true and beautiful. But, you know, we can also offer them our challenging moments during our practice. Moments where when we struggle to be kind and wise in our daily and different situations. You know, it's not easy to change our lifetimes or very old habits, but we try. And for example, personally, I joined the Good night book club. <laughs> and <Woo! laughs> I write down that. that. <laughs> and and did well for five uh for like five nights. And I thought it will be easy just to continue. And I was so happy about doing it, right? Like going to sleep early and read wisdom books. But now I'm finding it hard to keep it up. So however, like trying failing and then trying again is a big offering habits don't change quickly so let's don't be hard on ourselves our teachers don't want that they want us to find joyful effort in those time and knowing that you know they are happy and very proud of our progress they love you even when we have a bad day yes <laughs> mm. <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing with us thank you for sharing with the audience thank you also for everything you're doing um, Aldo I know you're involved in the Spanish translation program you're now organizing retreats you're teaching a lot of courses in Guadalajara and Mexico now in new countries uh, running these uh, new projects to reach other places and also Paulina you're doing the uh, the Club de Oro you are raising a kid. You are teaching courses also now at these days. You are one of the main producers and organizers of the Latin America tour. So I think what you're doing is really, really wonderful. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Do you have something you want to ask them or or talk about, Tim? Yeah, I'm I'm wondering um, where are you all going? Like, where are you going to be going in the next couple of months? And then how could we find out, how can we find out about it so maybe some of us could come along? Yeah, maybe some of us can come along. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are all very busy, so I don't know if I should invite you guys because you are very busy. Uh, <laughs> Always invite. Yeah. <laughs> we say no, but invite. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, we are actually very excited because we have an an exclusive announcement for Peach Tree World News and all the sponsors of the Latin American <laughs> tour to whom we want to give a big thank you for their support again. Thank you so much. So the exclusive news is that we now have a date for our first five days retreat in Santa Marta, Colombia. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And we have a little video. You want to show it? Could we? Yes. There you go. Yeah, that's, um, it's a retreat in Colombia and Caribbean, a beautiful place. And you know, right, after you don't even have to invite me. I'm going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you know, after meeting with our local new friends in Colombia during the four, the first tour we did, we found out that what they want the most is to learn to meditate, like real meditation practice, like how to calm and fill their minds with wisdom. So Aldo can tell you more about it. Yes, we're very excited. We're going to this beautiful beach in Colombia. And actually, the people from Colombia uh, asked about meditation and they want to go deeper because I think that's what the what the society wants like to go deeper to have like a more peace of mind so in this meditation retreat we're gonna go very deep into the meditation practice we're gonna learn about the obstacles how to deal with 
uh, the obstacles in your mind for meditation and also different techniques of meditation and different stages of meditation to know where you're at and how can you know how you're improving and it's just going to be a beautiful gathering we're going to have also yoga um delicious food and we're going to be by the ocean going deep in meditation the dates are the dates are from the 29th to the 3rd of September. Yes, Wonderful. Welcome to come. The classes are going to yes. be in Spanish or also English for the international audience? If we have international audience, we will give um, offer translation for sure. Wonderful. And how many people are you imagining? How many would you like to have? We would like to have 40 at least. Uh, that's like the biggest capacity in the hotels we are looking for. Uh, so okay. let's... Wonderful. Well, wonderful. You, you already have one. <laughs> one. One. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, okay. One. Okay, I see. No, it, it sounds wonderful. It sounds wonderful. We, we are excited also to hear about uh, the other... Uh, countries Argentina Costa Rica I hear some people are going to Peru also this year so yeah. as soon as I you know let's so. know yeah we are almost closing the dates for those places like Peru and Argentina so we would love you to invite them to to join one of your shows so they can talk about it later okay Okay, okay, thank you very much. And finally, do you want to tell us a little bit of Mexico retreat? Uh, it, well, not really retreat, but you know, the event, Angel Debates the Devil. Yes. What are yes. the news on that? Another great news is that we have the honor of Geshela returning to Mexico. Thank you, Geshela, for this. Um, thank you, thank you. We are stepping a bit out of our comfort zone, you know, aiming to bring teachings to more people in Latin America. So we went to the to the equivalent, what we call the New York of, uh, of our country, which is Mexico City. And, you know, the this event is, is going to be amazing. The hotel is located on one of the most important avenues of the city allowing you guys to look around and and meet the spirits of all the mexican people and their traditions so you should take a look to this amazing city and of course um Geshela is gonna be teaching us about you know this battle we all have in our minds good versus evil or good versus bad which is wisdom versus ignorance and Aldo wants to talk about it about more <laughs> yeah well it's just gonna be an amazing gathering Gashel is going to the big Mexico city and it's this beautiful teaching of our debate in our mind of the misunderstanding I guess against the wisdom side and we're gonna go deeper how we are trapped or deceived by our ignorant mis uh misunderstanding might and how can we change to the wisdom bright side it's gonna be amazing we're gonna have simple your meditation yoga check it out those are the dates and uh, the pre-registration is open and the final registration will be open very soon okay thank you thank you so much I hope to see you there. I'm excited to go. I always like also spending time in Mexico, wonderful people, wonderful food. So if you are anywhere in the world, I recommend you coming. Mexico to me is really, really special and very wonderful place to be. Also, Tim likes it very much and Rob also. So yeah, <laughs> you can come anytime. Thank you. Is there going to be a band? Well, uh, sorry to put you on the spot. Just what? kidding. Yeah. Music. Yes, always. Oh. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, we will keep, uh, sorry, you will keep us posted with the other events. And Pau, I see you. I just you. want to, yeah. to remind to all of us something, you know, today that is the teacher's day. 
there's a video very famous on Instagram <laughs> that says, and I also, I want to thank me, you know, because it's true. We must have done something really good to have these incredible teachers in our life. You know, we have been sharing wisdom in the past, being kind, being generous. So it's good to remember that we did something beautiful. So let's keep planting those seeds to have our teachers close in our hearts. Thank you, Juan. Thank yeah. you, Alden, my friends. Thank there. you, Juan. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Rob. Thank you as well. And hopefully see you soon or come to visit. That'll be fun. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what's next? You're next. You want to sit here? Uh, sit here. So what do you think, Tim, with this? This, our friends in, in Mexico, in Latin America. Uh, I'm really excited that we're doing this program. Yeah. You know, and, you know, what? We've we've been spending months and months planning this. Yeah. And we have a big, big team. Like you're just seeing Paolo, Paolo and Aldo working on this, but there are so many people making this possible in Mexico. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I wish we could put them all on the screen to thank them. Yeah, I don't know if that's possible right now, but it was just a wish. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much to everyone that is making this possible. Yeah, there is a big team, and I I've seen this process of how. Maybe when I start studying in Mexico, we are mm -hmm. talking like uh, maybe 10, 11 years ago, uh, we were like a group of maybe 20, 30 people. And now it has grown so much. Now I think it's over like 200 or something. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really wonderful how it has become a very solid group working together, doing great events. And, and I also think it has to do with how many teachers are there. Mm -hmm. you know, they're teaching all the time and then they're training that the next generation. There's a group of solid teachers who have made it through the advanced courses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now they're teaching constantly and then they're teaching their students and we're seeing those students start joining the teacher trainings. Yeah. So we're seeing multiple generations growing. Yeah, that's really wonderful. Um, for example, what I know, it's Aldo is teaching every single week, even twice a week. Uh, Alex Rivas is also teaching. Paulina now is teaching online there. So it's happening, as you say, in constant basis. And I remember, to me, that was one of the successes of, of my generation when I started. We were having classes every single week, twice mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And, and that helped us to build not only like this practice and constant study, but also friendship. I'm spending time together. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I think that's the, I think that's the power of the Mexican Sangha is their friendship and how they, they work together as a community. You know, I, I'm kind of a loner. It doesn't seem that way, but I don't. You I, have cats. As I said, I'm yeah. kind of a loner. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Point taken. Point taken. Right? Yeah. You know, but I, I <laughs> I have three best friends. Yeah. Right? They, Five. Yeah. There's two. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Two humans. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, but I feel that, that that the people in Mexico are my friends and, and they've they do feel the same. Oh, I'm well, yeah. so they, yeah. <laughs> they told me they yeah. You know, and, and and they've taught me a lot about myself and they've taught me how to come out of my shell a lot more mm -hmm. and and to understand the importance of practicing together as a community. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Is there something that you're planning that you would like to invite people to participate in lately? Mm. Something that you think it could be? Well, yeah, it has to do with teachers one actually. Okay, great. You know, so in the ancient classics organization, mm -hmm. we're putting together a brand new program over the next, we're starting it next year and we're planning it now where we're building teacher trainings in five main areas. And it's going to be a lot of work. Um, and, but I think the most important thing is to become a master in five different areas. And one of them is the ancient philosophy, which a lot of people already are. They're going to become masters in meditation, masters in how to do retreat, and then masters in steps on the path of Lam Rim, how to, how to reach out to normal people. 
And then a, the fifth one is a master in the advanced teachings. Wow. And so we're putting together teacher trainings in those five areas to create a full mastery program in, in practice and also to be a well-rounded teacher. How many years will that take? Wrong question. No, I mean, I mean, as a student, <laughs> let's say, let's say, I wanna, I wanna do the we, process. We, we wanna inspire people. One, we don't yeah. wanna tell them how long it takes. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's fun, right? Oh, totally fine. <laughs> so you shall come. <laughs> more than one year. More than <laughs> more than one year. Yeah. Yeah. Mastery takes time. Yeah. Right? But we'll have we'll have steps on that path. Yeah. To being a teacher. So it's not like you have to take seven years to get there. Uh -huh. We'll have things for you to do and opportunities for people to teach in all of those areas from a beginning teacher to a master teacher, like, like these two guys right now. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you also for all the work you're doing because you are helping so many people. And I have heard that many people are very attracted to your classes. They follow mm. you around. They are interested in your personal life. Like it seems that you are. Oh, you're like you're like Tim's yeah. personal life. Yeah. yeah, we're not going to talk about that today. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, well, let's see. I don't know. Is there anything we should know about? Is there anything we should know about? Um, <laughs> One of the things that I was thinking about sharing today, Juan. All right. Um, about my personal life. Oh, oh. is this exclusive? Peace Tree World News? Stop, stop the recordings. <laughs> no, it has to do with, um, it has absolutely nothing to do with what you're asked, asking right now. What am I asking? <laughs> um, but what it has to do with is how what I've learned from my teacher beautiful and then my teachers on how to, how to be in the world. Mm. And, and I think that there was a time, by the way, nobody knows this person, just so I know, just letting you know, I'm talking about a person, but no one knows this person just so you don't like think you try to find out who, right. So we'll there, find out. Yeah. yeah. We'll find out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, there was a person I was having an extreme difficulty with. Like, okay. Like it was, I didn't like how they were behaving. They seemed like they were hurting a lot of people and I was personally hurt as well. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I was really, really upset and I didn't know how to handle the situation. And I talked to my teacher about it and they said, if you really understood where they were coming from, Tim, how would you treat your mental afflictions? How would you treat your negative emotions? And I was like, I can't do anything I want to do that's in my head. <laughs> right. And I really thought it really struck me. It struck me in my heart, actually. Like, what do you do with your negative emotions? How do you treat them? Whether they're inside or they're outside of you. And it was one of the, it was such a shocking moment to be, oh, I need to treat my negative emotions and my positive emotions, the people I don't like and the people I do like, in an equal way because they're they're coming from me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it really changed how i i saw the world and saw how i interact with with people whether in my private life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> or in my more public life right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and and i think that for me was one of the deepest teachings i ever received like how do you treat the things that appear to you Mm -hmm. And then if you treat those well, even if they're yelling at you or they're mm -hmm. treating you in ways that you don't like, that does change. I mean, what ended up happening is that person changed completely. I didn't say anything to them. I just looked at my own heart in the way that I was doing those things to other people. And then that the whole thing just changed and it became softer. And my life has become softer and less sandpapery, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Even my own mind, it feels less, it feels a little bit nicer to be inside myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Way of putting it. yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that didn't answer your question. Exclusive no. world news. But... Yeah. No, it's great. It's great. And thank you for sharing. And I think we were talking about this at the beginning. I do really feel like a, an atmosphere of friendship and more peace. And we are all getting along mm -hmm. and not only getting along, but enjoying spending time. At least that's what I feel. I don't know if you do the same, but it's like we have a good time spending <laughs> we together. We, we really do. Together. We I enjoy yeah. spending time at the cafe yeah. and talking to each other, doing good projects mm -hmm. together. So it's really wonderful. Maybe we are all planting little seeds of harmony 
and they are ripening in this way. It seems that way, Juan. It really does. Wonderful. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. Um, you're, will you up for helping me to talk with our next guests? Sure. Who are we talking okay. to Okay. Guess who we have all Ooh, the way some of my Some of my favorite ocean. people. Yes. We are going to talk with Peter and Maria. Oh. Hey, how are you? Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Good to see you. <laughs> Where are you? We are in Vienna in a cafe because Tuesday is our holiday. It's our yeah. day off. We're in a museum, actually. Did you know, guys, that today is a Black Moon Day? <laughs> in which way? In the way that uh, Peach Street Cafe is not open. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just kidding. Okay. Michel, I was telling me, like, every day the cafe is not open is Black Moon. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Joking, I guess, but not a joke. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. So, how are you? Tell you us a little bit of what's that. Can you hear us well? Yes. Good. So, we would like to to hear from you a little bit of what you have to share first, and then move on on to the new projects you are doing, which I, by the way, think are fantastic. Right. Well, first of all, thank you. Again, Juan, for having us. Good to see you, team and Rob. It's very nice to have you on that show as well. Didn't know you would be there. Uh, it's special to be invited to talk about why a teacher's a good idea. And so we actually um, decided each of us is going to share one experience that we have about teachers. And then we're going to show you a little video, which we think really puts the idea of how a teacher should think about their student in, in one minute. And then at the end, we're going to talk about how we are trying to, or how we are helping new people to become teachers and how we all can help them to be successful in that. That's a little bit the plan. Uh, let's wait with the video. We first have a, we first have a, First, I wanted to ask Maria, wow, what's smart. your... Oh. Wait, wait, no video yet. First, they are talking and then yeah. leave. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. But I'm happy the video works. That was good news. <laughs> you Maria, want me to share? Maybe you start. Okay, so we actually uh, just were talking with Peter. And I was thinking, what is the most important thing? How really teachers in my life changed changed my life actually quite radically and I realized that uh, a big function of a teacher is uh, to see a potential in their student. Uh, I really think that teachers have a completely different perspective on their students and they see much bigger in us than we see ourselves. And then because they see our biggest potential, something which we cannot even think about yet, they can push us to do things we would never otherwise do. And we, because of teachers, we can really become completely different beings. I don't know, Tim became a translator or from ancient language. Oh, I mean, really? Tim, would you think that? How would you even think that that's going to be your profession? No, I, no, I just sat in the back of the room with headphones on for years <laughs> recording. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, Tim, you should be a translator. I was like, what? <laughs> exactly. And we were just watching before that uh, Xiaoping and Stanley. Xiaoping is the director of the university. I don't know. Maybe she knew that she would become that, but I don't think so. And then for me, shake her for hand. me, like, we were, we were we were just talking with Peter and he told me, maybe he can say that when he met me for the first time 12 years ago, and I'm just a normal girl from Moscow working in real estate. And he immediately see that I'm going like, tell, tell, what did you see? How is that? Like, I couldn't even cram a thought like that. I mean, I think it will happen to you when you get students that you, you, Judge them not so much the way they look like, but you know how stable they are, 
how is the pope miss the body and then you can see that they can be good meditators they can do retreats well and you you get a feeling like that and uh for me it was very clear with maria that she had that potential he told me immediately you're going to be a translator you're going to be a teacher I'm like, she was excited no <laughs> never never <laughs> but now i am a translator now i am a teacher i mean without teachers it would never happen so really teachers they they see your biggest potential and they help you to become a completely different being that that's i think the most important for me true uh, my my story about why teachers are so powerful is we had a we had a cool uh, offline event in vienna a couple of weeks ago with 150 people where we basically copied geshe michael's three retreat teaching about the magic of empty teachers and if anyone ever wants to go deeper into qualities of teachers, in the second class of the teacher, Geshe talks about 91 qualities of a teacher. And one of them, uh, I was supposed to teach that day. And, I, uh, and it's that when you're close to a great teacher, they rub off on you. So they, they're not just teaching you formally stuff, but suddenly you get a quality because you're close to them, which you didn't think about before, or didn't plan to have, or it, it just happens automatically. And I remember I was on stage that day thinking about what would be a good example. And then I realized that as we are thinking about building a house in Sedona, uh, we are always talking about a bigger house than the one that we actually need because we are planning to have our students there as well. And I was thinking, why am I thinking about the students there? And I realized JB and Connie has been hosting us all those years over and over again, that in my psyche, building a place has to be a place where there's a spot in the room or two rooms for students as well. And it blew my mind. I, I didn't decide that. I didn't plan for that. It happened because I'm close to JB and Connie. So, and that makes me super grateful. And in that context, I think Tim knows, everyone knows when you teach, there's also always a danger that you are, you want something for yourself, but there's this video that we're going to show now, which for me symbolizes the mindset of a great coach and teacher the best way. Maybe when we can look at that with the music. Okay, music. So, so for me, the amazing thing is the coach never once looks at the judges. It's just a relationship between him and the student. And when the student comes down, he's not so happy because he doesn't want the student to get too big of a head and pretends he's not freaking out completely. And I think that's two very good, two very good qualities. Uh, Juan, do we have do we have two more minutes? Yes, yes. Hi, Konila, by the way. Good to see you. Hi, Konila. Uh, so our goal, as you know, is we have this program to create 108,000 people who are beyond the negative emotions because when you look for a teacher, you can look for different qualities to learn. But the main quality that we have to want from a teacher is to help us overcoming our negativities. And that would be in an ancient language called Aria. And we have a plan to reach that, which is we want to have 36 cities, each city with 3,000 students, with the ancient uh, wisdom courses that Tim is also representing. And so those cities we have, we're going to show two of them now. One is uh, from St. Petersburg and the other one from Almaty in Kazakhstan. They need support and help and money to be able to teach other people to be perfect teachers. And uh, what we didn't say last time, but I had a discussion with our groups, 10% of any donation you give to us is going to go to the ACI headquarters. And uh, another 10% will go to the Petri World you show because you also need to survive and do things. We decided to share. <laughs> Strangely, we decided to share. Um, who rubbed that off on me? I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, Let's have a look, Juan, if you're ready, let's show St. Petersburg first. And please, any money you give, any dollar you can give is a support 
to create beings who will be able to be great teachers. Please support the teachers who are teaching wisdom from different cities. The, the video, not just the girl. Good afternoon. We are in St. Petersburg, where Michael Roach proposed to catalog ancient Asian philosophy manuscripts at the Institute of Oriental Manuscripts of the Russian Academy of Sciences in 1992. And it's great that this good work continues, that wisdom becomes a tool that changes the lives of a large number of people. The Classical Wisdom Academy is one of Michael Roach's non-profit projects, and ancient Asian wisdom courses are taught live in different cities around the world, including here in St. Petersburg. We have already held two courses, and of course we plan to continue. And it is you who can become the person thanks to whom these courses will happen in the city on the river Neva, and possibly on all planets, creating a perfect world. Thank you, so that was St. Petersburg. And then one more, last one is from Almaty, Kazakhstan, which is uh, traditionally a country with a strong Muslim tradition and where three women are teaching, passing on the ancient wisdom. Let's have a look. In November 2022, a series of ACI courses based on ancient Asian books was launched in Kazakhstan. For a year and a half, full life courses have been organized and 300 registrations have been collected in total. ACI courses are a guide to achieving results in any area of life. This knowledge has been tested by the experience of over 45 generations. Traditionally, they are passed on for free, but for the live classes we pay for rent, flights and accommodation of the teachers, videotaping and other expenses. By the 18th ACI course, we want to train 3,000 people because we believe in the benefits and see the life results of applying this knowledge. Support us by becoming an ACI sponsor in Kazakhstan. Any contribution from $1 is welcome. Scan the QR code. Your contribution will help us reach our goal of training 3,000 people and raise an annual budget of 11,000 US dollars. By supporting this project financially, you automatically become involved in changing this world and people's lives for the better. Make your contribution now. Wow. <laughs> Peter, something's happening here in the audience. <laughs> we got like 2,000 for St. Petersburg and 2,000 for Kazakhstan. Just now, 2,000 each, 4,000 total. From the audience here. Yes, it looks like we may have lost them. <laughs> yeah. So they are so excited they left the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. I... My phone got too hot. Can you believe it? <laughs> so, so, so what you missed, uh, Maria and Peter, you missed something really cool. Do you want to announce it again? Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh very interesting that you just left when this happened. But here, the audience uh is donating two thousands for St. Petersburg and two thousand for Kazakhstan. Yay! Yay. Thank you so much. Wow! Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much, guys, and thank you for what what uh, we are doing. Please, Tim and Juan, we're going to make a calculation. You will get the money, uh, and we will also be very transparent in the future of how we fundraise and what happens in each thank of you. those places. Thank you. Thank so Thank you much. so much. Um, but, but, but <laughs> thank there, you. There's a pressing question from a lot of us. Um, yeah. When is your next wedding? <laughs> Yeah. Number five. We did. We did four. We are right now going to. Do. How about Paris? Yeah. Oh, well, well, you already did Paris. So, like, where's the next one? Are you suggesting I mean... something? Are you hinting? Yes. <laughs> what? I don't know. Rim Rock. <laughs> well, we did Diamond Mountain. Okay. Well, we are open to suggestion if it helps to fundraise. If it helps. People, <laughs> we can do it. Good for yeah, someone like, uh, All right. Well, maybe Mexico in July. We'll think about it. But but we're, <laughs> we're both excited to know that you're renewing your your commitment to each other, and it's always a lot of fun. 
And, and I admire That's both cool. of you very, very deeply. And thanks for being teachers and thanks for being friends as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for teaching the teachers that we are right now promoting. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And okay. please, everyone, keep rubbing off on rubbing off, off, off on us, even when we are not conscious about it. Of teachers, <laughs> not of us. No. Well, <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. Yes. Yes. Yeah, see you. See you. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's wonderful. Nowadays, the technology allows to do these things. Mm -hmm. You know, like my dad used to always say things like that. Like, oh, it's wonderful. And I now I'm starting to understand how wonderful it is, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. For our next guest, as you can see, we have here, Conila. Thank you so much for coming. Representing YSI. You're doing so much. How are Thank you feeling you, today? Bye. I'm feeling great today. Actually, I want to say John Brady, my husband, is not here because he was he already had a commitment to be on a call this morning with Taiwan. So otherwise, he would love to be here. Yeah, he talked to me uh, yesterday. I think he's cooking something very, very special, very, very cool. We're going to be talking about soon in our weekly programs, but they are basically organizing a big concert. Uh, in Taiwan, or as far as I understand, they had one, but now they are organizing the, the big international broadcasting. They are, and they will have a, another one. And it's always about thanking uh, the gratitude for those people who support ALL. And one of the things that Kanye is so good at is gratitude. Because wow. you know, I've wondered, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, um, <laughs> You know, so what I see, Connie, is, you know, you work so hard. You, I, I don't know if you actually sleep, <laughs> uh, frankly, you know, and, and you do so many things, you know, how do you, how do you have the energy for it? And how do you keep such a positive attitude all around everything you do? It's always a delight to be with you. Thank you, Tim. I'll tell you, I have a nap in the afternoon now. <laughs> Yes, the Good Afternoon Book Club. It's very hard for me to nap in the afternoon. I remember when I was in three-year retreat, one of my big things was, Keshla, something's wrong with me. What should I do? I'm sleepy in the afternoon. So, Connie, have a nap. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 the deep, deep secret practice. Of oh, nap. Hashtag go to bed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Tim, I think that humor is is one of my best ways mm -hmm. of keeping that attitude going. Mm -hmm. I laugh at myself a lot mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm like everybody else. I do weird things. You know, it's not always that you hold the best worldview. I laugh at Juan too, but it's especially because he is so much fun. I really, before I go into that more, I, I love this Peachtree World News Show. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. For one thing, we all get a chance. Kesha Michael has no time. Here we are. We get to, we get a chance to express what we're doing in our organizations. I just learned a ton. And then I look around and I see the students. They Okay, I'm really going off your question, but I want to say the students that are Kesha Michael's students, they usually say you can tell a great teacher by their student. And there are so many great students. Which one? <laughs> Which one? You. <laughs> I mean by that, that you usually see just one particular kind of a student that a teacher has. I see like a world full of amazing people who are Geshe Michael students and grand students. And they all still see him as their teacher, even though it's through us that uh, we might be teaching like you are, Tim. And one is through this Peachtree World News. Uh, so I really took us off. So I have so much gratitude for my teacher, for one thing. You know, it's just, oh boy, it's hard not to cry. <laughs> um, they all also say that, you know, you should be, let me go back. I think when I was first met Geshe Michael and I heard, all the things that he would do to test students, I would think, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I'm so lucky I never got tested. 
<laughs> Famous last words. And, and then he gave me the uh, the zombie project to to renew <laughs> to to reawaken YSI. Um, and yes, <laughs> yes, I that has been a test. Also, too, I'm like you, Tim. I'm very shy, so to have to be a teacher to come in front of many people, wow. <laughs> It's amazing what a teacher does to make their student grow. For this, I'm so grateful to Geshe Michael. And um, yeah, so back to what makes me happy all the time. <laughs> I've even forgotten your question. <laughs> um, I think it is just doing the things that Geshe asked me to do, mm -hmm. stretching myself more to be able to do those things. And being so happy about what I see all of us doing together, it's astounding. Like just to listen to Pau, to Aldo, to uh, Peter and Maria, you know, to Hector in New York, everybody in this room, Stanley and Allison, yourself, we're all stretched. Rob, I, th I think... It's amazing. People who came from Ukraine here who are running a, an amazing restaurant. Geshe Michael stretching himself to do a restaurant in yeah. the middle of COVID. I'm probably speaking too fast. Um, <laughs> there are just so many things in my life that I wake up happy about. Sometimes I wake up too happy. Um, <laughs> really, last night, not last night, the night before, I couldn't sleep. It was just like, too many things that to be happy about. So, anyway, that's wonderful. It's just like a, one of those good problems to have. I can sleep because I'm too happy. So, Conila, will you talk a little bit of of what you've been? What are you planning or what you've been doing lately with YSI? Because I know you have some uh, posters you sent me last night. We yes. can uh, talk a little bit about it. There is a very cool event of coming in June, I saw. There are so many beautiful things that YSI does. And this is not me. This is the beautiful students of Geshe Michael, uh, Earl Burney, Bob Serino, um, Benjamin. They, they are all working hard to do things to keep YSI alive. Uh, YSI carries these beautiful, probably the deepest esoteric teachings that Geshe Michael taught. And it's our job to kind of get them out in a world, into the world to like business audiences, to yogis. So it's very, they're awesome. Uh, I've heard many people this morning talk about community. Benji and Earl are amazing at uh, creating community. So we've started a practice. They, they are starting practice clubs, weekly practice clubs, Benji on Mondays and Earl on Wednesdays. Earl's is, we're calling it Mind Lab, mm -hmm. and that club is about meditation. We have a picture on that. That's, oh, okay. Oh, I'll talk. Benji's on Mondays is, is yeah. really, it's it's uh, only right now in the Russian and English languages. Uh -huh. Might change that. But really, it's just as it says there, movement, breath work, and meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, Benji loves community. Um even now we have forums where people just come together and discuss the courses that Geshe Michael has already taught. Mm -hmm. um, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika one, two, and three. So just just so you know, Benji is also coming to Kyoto in the beginning of June. He's going to be teaching yes. yoga yes. And, and our and, program. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys are so lucky. Yeah. He is <laughs> amazing. He's one of the best. It's it, the talent is phenomenal that Benji has. Mm -hmm. I love taking his classes. They are so safe. They are so fun. And you just feel like you want to do more. <laughs> so I'm delighted to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. We went to jump to the cold river one time. It was very fun. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah. And Earl did. No, no, he didn't. He jumped into a hot tub. Yeah. And Earl left us behind. <laughs> So can we show the next picture? Because that's a QR code yeah. when people could sign up for it. Yes. Yeah, it all leads to the YSI website. Okay. And you'll find both Benji's and uh, Earl's um, weekly practice clubs there. So that's Wonderful. cool. Uh, and then you mentioned June. In June, we have our, our 
200 hour or, or even 500 hour YTT mm-hmm. coming up. So you can get uh, certified as a yoga teacher, mm-hmm. which is very cool. That is something that I want to thank Lydia Gallagher for, uh, who is Word's partner. She is amazing at, at, you know, she got us certified. That's phenomenal. Uh, and then, yes, in June and July and September, we have this program where Earl brings together, you know, very great teachers to discuss the poetry that came out of a very deep, silent retreat. So that that's going to happen. Yeah, you saw it in June, July, and September with Earl Burney and very great teachers. Wonderful. Okay. Inner yeah. Kingdom, Reviving the Quiet Retreat Teachings. Yes. Awesome. So you can sign up for that. So thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, yeah. will you will you like to stay here with us and have our last interview before the great segment with Geshe Michael? Yes, sure. Okay. okay. So now we go with Noor Ibrahim. She's going to share with us what she's doing lately. Hello, Noor. Thank you for coming. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. How, How are, you? are you? I'm good. I'm waiting for my part. <laughs> yes. Oh, my apologies. You know. Don't worry. It's all good. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Good to see you all. Hi, team. Hi, Connie. Good to see Hello. you. Uh, thank you, translators. I can see you translating. Thank you so much for doing this. So tell us a little bit, Noor, like I know lately you've been working in uh, many different projects, actually. One of them, for example, that I'm excited to get to know when it, there is more information, but it's the, the Peacock Parenting Project, where I happen to have the chance to watch a few chapters. It's wonderful. I really like that one, the Peacock Parenting Project. Now you're also running the, the Michael and Veronica Roach Foundation. Uh, I saw you having a very interesting meeting the other day at the Pitchery Cafe. So <laughs> what's coming up? Tell us a little bit. Or if you want to start sharing a little bit of um, something nice you want to talk about, what it means for you to have teachers in your life. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, actually, thank you for inviting me to this uh, episode when you are celebrating teachers. I think it's uh, such an honor to be able to join this uh, month of celebration. Um, I come from a culture where teachers uh, comes right after parents. <laughs> so they are super much appreciated. And uh, this year, 2024, will be uh, the 10th anniversary since I met Geshe Michael, who is my teacher, uh, my heart teacher and my life teacher and my life coach and everything. <laughs> So um, I'm very happy to have the chance. Um, I was listening to um, all the guests before and I admired how everyone shared uh, good insights about having a teacher. So in my part, um, I learned from having a teacher is uh, the main lesson I learned is no matter what is happening in your life, just keep doing good things to help others. Uh, if I would need to summarize this 10 years, I would, uh, this was the main lesson. And uh, that was also very kindly and uh, smoothly translated through the projects uh, I was involved to, to do. Uh, as you mentioned, the charity, uh, DCI, SCIM, and uh, now the parenting uh, course. Um, so I'm so grateful to have these uh, teachings and the teacher who always direct my mind to start doing, stop complaining and start doing. <laughs> and I need to tell you it works. Uh, it makes me feel um, that I'm useful in this world. Um, this was about having the teacher. And to answer your question about uh, the parenting course, it's going to be launched in June, and we will send more information uh, about it, but it's coming very soon, June, the start when um, people can sign up. And we are now brainstorming to record uh, another part, the third part in July. So 
um, things are moving. And um, about the uh, Michael and Ver Ver Veronica Roach, uh, Roach Foundation, um, it's a grant giving foundation. We are a place where we uh, give uh, grants and uh, one day maybe I'll be asking for money, I don't know, <laughs> but now, <laughs> now I'll be enjoying giving away the money. Um, and uh, we have been doing a lot through the last three years and maybe I was not um, um, super public in mentioning because I was focusing uh, more on the doing, on being on top of uh, everyone's need, uh, contacting people, contacting people who even I don't know. So in the last three years, we have been uh, helping and we gave away $1 million, uh, both from DCI and SCIM. And uh, it was a shock for me when I did the summary after three years. <laughs> said, oh, this is very cool. Uh, we mostly help worldview organizations uh, if they if they need help, <laughs> whenever they need help, and also we go to um, emergencies or uh, international issues. And here I had, um, I said to myself, maybe I share with you some photos and some project if we have time uh, about what we did, for example, in the last year. Do we have time for a few photos, uh, Juan? Yes. So this uh, one, um, uh, it's a project in Germany to help Ukrainian kids, um, Ukrainian and every other nationality kids who had any kind of um, uh, of trauma or shock in their life. Uh, they help them through yoga and play. And if you ask how do we do that, we have partners everywhere uh, where we want to support. We always partner with local uh, NGOs or local local organizations. So those were was um, this was our partner there in Germany. And the next one uh, is uh, this is this uh, also in Germany helping adults to process a lot of uh, hard moments in their life, also through yoga and meditation. Uh, it was actually um, the person who uh, helped us uh, coordinate this was one of the YSI students. So thank you so much, Connie, for having great students. <laughs> and the next one is, this is so dear to my heart. I know it might not be very pretty, but um, this is when we uh, partnered with the Sugar Foundation in Pakistan. It's a local foundation. They helped rebuild houses for people who were affected by the floods so you can see um, the old house and the bottom which was extremely destroyed by the rain and floods and then with our help and also many other organizations help they managed to build a new house for this uh, little guy and his family you see the house we built in the back and maybe another he is not a refugee. He is um, he's just a normal person who was affected by the flood. Uh, so there have been like maybe thousands of families who were displaced. Um, yeah, and uh, let's go to the next one, uh, which is not a very artistic photo. It's taken by mobile, but this is a school in Uganda when we uh, sponsored uh, the teacher. <laughs> I show this because we are celebrating Teachers' Day. You see this guy who is teaching. He is one of the, uh, the people in the village who uh, had the chance to go to school, and now he is helping other kids uh, to learn. So he became the teacher, but he needed some money to survive, and they needed money for the school and for all the modest things they have. So we sponsored them for one year also through our partner uh, who works there. So we partnership with big organizations outside and um, through them, we give the grants and we follow up. Um, maybe we go to the next slide. Thank you, Noor, so much for, you know, sharing all <laughs> your beautiful, you. like you have so many, oh, it, it, let's see, if, I think it's zoomed in a little bit. There we go. You want to talk yeah. about this real quickly and then 
Uh, just this is uh, our logo in pro uh, progress. We might be changing it soon, but this is more or less uh, the logo for the foundation. And soon we'll be sharing the website and uh, more and more information. So I know my time is up and thank you so much for the chance. And, and, and Noor, you're such an inspiration that you're doing so much work in the background. You're raising a family. You're such a joy to be around. And, you know, thank you. And, and it's really lovely to hear all the cool things you're doing because we don't see it very often. And, you know, yeah. please stay with us and, and, and please keep working so hard. We really appreciate yeah. you. And I promise to show more often. This is one of the teachings I get from my teacher on that meeting. On the <laughs> cafe. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you also, Noor. Um, next, we have Geshe Michael here with us. So let's welcome him and thank him so much for everything that you do for us. Thank you for your patience, for your love, for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys sit down. I think we'll just do you it together. Or you. It's okay. Anyone? Come on. Do you want any drinks? I uh, just okay. been drinking. <laughs> uh, no, I'm fine. Uh, we don't have much time left, and that's fine with me. I, I just had a short thing to talk about, and uh, that's what's coming up. And, uh, you know, I live a couple of years ahead of time, so I'm working on programs that will start in about two years. And uh, that's my main thing uh, during the day. Uh, during, I, I'm uh, the first member of the Good Night Book Club. And uh, to be honest, uh, during the COVID, uh, I, I stayed at home. I didn't travel. And uh, I got some bad habits. And I started to watch television. And uh, I, I don't own, I've never owned a television in my whole life. And I got one. And I, I got I started watching on my computer and Netflix. And uh, I started bad habits. And I got worse and worse. I was watching more and more TV and worse and worse things. And then I I then I I joined the Good Night Book Club. And uh that club's uh goal is at uh and Lindsay's here, and Lindsay's the director of it. She's um we have um at 10 o'clock at night, uh you put away your computer, you put away your phone. And uh, I I don't trust myself. So uh if I'm alone, if I'm not with my wife. Uh, Rob Haggerty comes to my room, my hotel room, and he takes, he like bangs on the door and says, hand it over. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of big. So I'm like, okay. And I give him my uh, computer and I give him my phone and it's exactly 10 o'clock. And then I try to read uh, something meaningful, some kind of uh, deeper uh, book for two reasons. One is I want to put good seeds in my mind. And secondly, if you have trouble sleeping, those ancient classics are great. <laughs> uh, in 10 minutes, they will put you to sleep, especially words book. So <laughs> that's why we, uh, that's why Lindsay is sending out that book. But uh, so 10 o'clock, I, I get a paper book and I read a little bit, uh, just a little bit, just a few minutes, maybe five, 10 minutes. And uh, because I've been doing it, it's been five months now, I, every, night 10 o'clock exactly uh, my phone goes away and i and i used to get up at two o'clock three o'clock look at my phone i in the first few days i realized uh i had to i had a question in my mind at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. and uh, do your fingernails grow faster or do your toenails <laughs> grow faster you know and i said i gotta where's my yeah. phone <laughs> where's my phone and then i uh, I'm like, God, it's such a stupid question. And then I realized uh, all the time I'm looking up stupid things on the phone, you know. And uh, I said, well, I, I won't find out how my fingernails grow. And uh, then I, I, I've always wanted to get up early. People interview me all the time. Oh, oh you did a three-year retreat. Yes. You're teaching meditation for 50 years. Yes. What time do you wake up? 
And I'm like, well, I, you know, I, I have a get up and, you know, I avoid the question. I'm not like John Brady and Connie get up at two 30 or something like that. Like I get up at eight, nine. So then uh, after I joined the good night book club, uh, I decided 6 a.m. And uh, so every morning now I get up at 6 a.m. because I go to bed on time. And because I'm not wasting my time in the middle of the night with junk, junk information. And now uh, when 5.59, I wake up, always. Uh, the alarm does not go off. I, I, I wake up and I turn off the alarm. And then Rob's banging on my door. Uh, he's got, I got your computer. I got your phone, you know. And, uh, and then I, you know, I have a coffee. And uh, I do a little meditation. I and about the book that I read the night before, uh, and then I start my uh, translation work. I start preparing for the classes in 2025. I'm working on 2025 right now, uh, and I'm working on a book by uh, Tsongkhapa. It's his most difficult book. I started it uh, 13 years ago. And I'm halfway finished, uh, and it's extremely deep. It's uh, so uh, Nagarjuna two thousand years ago wrote a book called Wisdom, and then six hundred years after that, six hundred years after that, uh, Chandakirti uh, wrote an explanation of wisdom called Entering the Middle Way, and in this case, Middle Way refers to the book Wisdom. Uh, so he, he wrote a commentary on that. And uh, that commentary was that commentary was lost. The Sanskrit was lost. And it was, but it, it was translated into Tibetan. And so I worked on the Tibetan for 13 years. And uh, this year, uh, Aisha Nguyen, Aisha Skofalus, uh she helped she and her team sanskrit team they found the original uh it's been missing for hundreds of years and they found uh through a team that they work with uh, they found the original of this book and uh, we have it now and they input it and they input it extremely well so we've always had a sanskrit team inputting ancient sanskrit books We've had that team for over 20, almost 20 years, but the work was never that good, to be honest. The work wasn't that good. In fact, I didn't use it a lot of the time. Uh, it's different countries, two different countries. And I didn't uh, use the material that they did because it, it wasn't well done. And then Aisha got involved and uh, Anatole got involved and uh, this new manuscript, which has been missing for hundreds of years, I got it uh, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it's perfect. It's totally perfect. Every single word is perfect. I found one mistake uh, that was made before them. Uh, with some guy, you know, hundreds of years ago made a mistake, and uh, I only found one mistake. And that's amazing. That's unbelievable. So uh, this is the book about the deep ideas of emptiness, the deepest ideas of emptiness. And we'll be covering it uh, after we finish the steps of the path. So we'll finish the steps of the path. Uh, how many years? I don't know. 14. It's 14 years of work. Uh, we will finish in December in Kyoto. Uh, and then we'll start uh, the emptiness teachings, which should take a bound five more years, six more years after that, something like that. So uh, we have the, now we have it, and I'm translating it. And I wanted to share with you one idea. Uh, we ran out of time, I know that. But the section I'm working on right now, it's about fake reality. Uh, so Arya Nagarjuna just talks about ultimate reality and fake reality. And it's a very interesting discussion the uh the the example is always called uh a crack in the sink mm -hmm. so you have a white sink 
and there's a crack in the sink and this person is trying to fix the crack over and over again. And then they realize uh, they have a scratch on their eyeball. Uh, so they somehow their eyeball got scratched uh, and they, they every time they look at the sink, they see some hair on the sink. This happens to me because my hair is, likes to share itself. Uh -huh. And uh, so they're like rubbing on the sink, trying to clean the the hair. And then they and then somebody comes up and says, "What are you doing?" You know, and they say, "I'm I'm trying to get the hair off the sink." And they say, "There is no hair on the sink." The other guy says, "There is no hair on the sink." And he says, "No, no, look here. There's a hair on the sink." You know, and then the guy says, I think your eye must be scratched. It must be a scratch on your eye, you know. And um, there's a very, very interesting question. The, the hair on the sink is what we call fake reality, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like there's a hair on the sink. We call it fake reality. And then ultimate reality involves the idea that there is no hair there. But then there's a beautiful question, and I'll leave you with that. Uh, Nagarjuna says, well, who figured this out? And they said, well, Buddha, you know? And he says, well, how? And they said, well, come on, Buddha means Mr. Know-it-all. He knows everything. They know everything, you know? Buddha knows everything. And he says, well, how much do they know? We call ji nepa ji yupa. They know the total amount of stuff, and they know how that stuff exists. They know two things. They know the total quantity of things in the universe, and they know how that stuff exists. They have two, two different knowledges. So they say, do they know all things? Yeah, that's the meaning of Buddha. So do, when they see something, it's all things. They said, yeah. So that's everything that exists. They say, yeah. So how do they know fake reality? Because it exists. It doesn't exist. The hair doesn't exist. Oh, but the illusion of the hair exists? You know how it no, but how can they see the illusion of the hair? They, they don't have a scratch on their eye. Yeah. Do they know all things? Yes. If they know it, is it all the thing? Is it a thing in the universe? Yes. If they cannot see it, does it exist? No. So how, yeah. who, who decided there's a fake reality? Because they can't see it. It's like the guy uh, sitting next to the guy with the scratch on his eye. Uh -huh. And he says, what are you doing? I'm, I'm cleaning the hair. Mm -hmm. And he says, what hair? See, this yes. guy can't see, see the, the hair. hair. Yeah. So how do you know there's a fake reality? But you can see. You the, can't see it. Yeah, but you can see the other person. Yeah, exactly. That's the answer. That's a big part of the answer. A big part of the answer is a Buddha cannot see the hair, but they can understand the confusion in the person's heart. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very deep. That's a very deep idea. They guess that the person's seeing a hair because they feel the person's feeling, because that exists. Mm -hmm. Their feeling exists. So they feel the other person's heart. And then they say, they must have some weird fake hair thing bothering them. They can't see the fake hair. The Buddha can't see the fake hair, but they look, they can see the confusion in the person's heart. And it's a very deep idea because that relates to teachers. You know, uh, to be a great teacher, uh, I think you have to put yourself in your student's heart and see what's bothering them that you cannot see. You see what I mean? Because it's not there. You see what I mean? Beautiful. <laughs> so it's a very beautiful idea. And I think that's all we got today. Going back to you, Juan. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much, Keshela. Okay. Thank you for all the projects you are doing and you're inspiring others to do. Yay. Thank you so much. So this is the celebration for the Teacher's Day. Maybe Yay. in the future it's a bigger, um, I'll say, or tradition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Anna, yeah, yeah. I mean, in, yeah. in the, culturally, yeah. we uh, develop this habit of honoring our teachers and being grateful for the teachers and for the teachings we have in our life. So lastly, I will just like to invite everyone, if you want to come here and we say bye, 
And yeah, just thank you for everything. If anyone wants to add a few last words, you're welcome to. You can send Marina, best Marina. regards to your family, friends. But yeah, just come, share with us. Maybe on, be here. Let's and thank you, thank you, Gisela. Um, and on my side, I just want to say thank you so much. And please stay. Yeah, keep no guiding problem. us, keep I'm helping planning. us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you everyone that is making this possible. Thank you to all the online uh, production. Thank you so much to the translators, to everyone who helps us to uh, check the language posters, to advertise, to send them everywhere. Thank you so much, Gina. She helps me so much with the online content. Marina, Francisco, all the Worldview Productions. Tim Lowenhoff that gave his permission for the Worldview Production to help us. And everyone else, thank you to all our teachers in our life. Please stay and keep helping us. And see you on Saturday. Come to the Mixed okay. Arts Reading Club. Yay. Bye. Bye.